Hi guys, welcome. You just saw my new video, Revolution, uh, my new drum cover. And I was thinking it could be interesting for some people if you had like a little production vlog. And uh, so this is the first one. And in this video, I'm going to show you uh, basically how we do the video cut. And I'm just, you know, also like explaining some stuff uh, in the from the production, um, how, we, how we film it and we record it in general. So um, yeah, just uh, I'm gonna dive right in and I'm gonna start our video editing software here. I've already copied all the videos um, to my external hard drive, all the, you know, the from the from the cam. You can check it here. Sun? Yeah. Okay. Obviously, um, the sound quality is really bad from the camera, but we do record uh, with a Sapphire interface right now, and we have like seven channels, I think, we used on this track. And we do all the audio processing in Pro Tools. Um, but this is already done, I already did this, but if you're interested in how we do this, just let me know. I can show you as well, of course. So I'm just gonna, you know, start a totally new uh, arrangement here, project. So this is in German, so you might be wondering. Let's see, okay, new folder. Revolution, video, cut. All right, this is our folder. And the new project's called Revolution video cut as well. So the rest is correct. It's like project. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I need to do a new sequence. New object, sequence, and we shoot in 1080, um, 25 frames per second. All right, you don't need to name the sequence. We only use one most of the time. Sometimes we might use two. If the rendering process is slow with all the audio, then I'll just, you know, copy the finished cut in a new sequence that speeds up the, um, the rendering. But right now I'm just gonna add new tracks. And I'm gonna add like 10 new video tracks and like 10 new audio tracks. And really important, the audios must be adaptive. So it does it, uh, it has the stereo track. So I don't need those, those uh, audio tracks because those are not adaptive. Just gonna delete them. All right, now all my audio tracks are adaptive. All right, let's see. Okay, the first thing is I'm gonna get the audio, just search for wave and filter the newest. And it's called Revolution Drum Cover Audio. And that's the one, I'm gonna copy it here. Okay, so this is our audio. Oh, you're not hearing anything because we need to have the sapphire be our playback engine. All right. Okay, this is our final audio. It's already cut and uh, mixed in Pro Tools, as I said, so we recorded five tracks with two cameras, and the first camera is always uh, at the back, and the second camera varies from different angles. So first I'm gonna load all the, all the video files, must be, let's see, yeah, five video files from the, let's see, what is it, back or front camera? Sun? Yeah. yeah. This is the front. 
I'm gonna copy those into my program here. Importing. So these are all my angles from the front and we're gonna put them into a folder. Front. All right. And I'm gonna do a folder back. All right, number two. So these are all the videos from the back. All right, it's importing. All right, so the first thing we need to do is, of course, um, get all the videos in sync. And actually, it's really helpful that we have the, the bad audio from the camera the camera records itself um, because then we can visually sync um, the tracks to the you know to the to the master audio pretty quickly so I'm gonna start out with the back videos here and I'm gonna choose the first one you can see it's uh, 2741 2742 and so forth so I know this is the first one the first take the five takes. I'm gonna drag it here and we're gonna look at the, the audios. So the bad audio starts around here. So let's see. Oh, this is actually relatively accurate already. So let's go to a part where I can really see if we are in sync. And you might hear also the, the bad audio played together with the good audio. That's because I'm trying to find the, the good sync point. All right, that sounds pretty good already. Maybe a little bit adjustment here. A couple of frames. Yeah, like one frame. That looks good. So I'm going to mute the bad audio and see if it's in sync. Yeah, what you just saw is the video was not in sync with the audio because I was playing something else in this particular take. But this looks fine. So I'm going to put it to the same length. All right, so the first one is in sync. Oh yeah, that was the right fill, accidentally. So this is the first angle. And I'm going to use the front camera from the first angle as well. All right. Look at the video and look at the audio again. Or it's even easier when you just have to put the same audio from the same take over another let's see not quite yeah that's pretty close that's as close as it can get so let's check again if it's in sync with a good audio That looks pretty good. Okay. So this process will be just repeated for all the other tracks. So I'm gonna stop the recording right now because otherwise it's gonna be really boring for you guys. And I'm gonna um, come back when I've done all the syncing here. 
All right, guys, I'm back. So I did all the sync, and I just realized that one camera, uh, this that's the one you see here. I messed up because my face is not visible, so I won't use the front one. Probably not much at all. It's always bad when you have a camera where the face is not <laughs> visible. People think like, what the heck? Okay, so now we have a lot of takes and they're all synced to this one master audio track. And obviously um, there are different fills played because I always improvise my fills. And then later uh, we choose uh, which, which fills I'm gonna use. Uh, actually, in this case, the video cut is not all that difficult because um, we did all the audio in Pro Tools before. Um, but oftentimes, when I imp because I improvise so much stuff, especially with the with the with the drum covers that have beats underneath it, then I'm more free. Um, so these ones I always just bounce out of uh, Pro Tools, or uh, rather record them out of Pro Tools. So I have like also like five uh, or four different uh, audio tracks, like and then every single audio track um, has um, a camera angle, right? So then I need to also cut the the audio in um, in the in the video cut program, and this is much more difficult. But here I just finished it all in Pro Tools, and now I can just you know choose the choose the right videos for the audio. And what I did is I have a list here. I made a sheet. Oh yeah, Pro Tools wants to be registered. Always. Um, I have a list here where um, I basically wrote down um, the parts of the song and which camera angles I used where. Because otherwise it would take a long time to you know watch every little clip and, and check where I played what. So I have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 14 uh, different um, parts here uh, where I did cut the video. Alright, so the next thing I need to do is I need to link up the videos that belong together. So I'm gonna link them up here. That was still linked, so I need to oh yeah, always delete the linking and then relink. Okay, now we actually don't even need the audio anymore. We can just throw it away. We only have our master audio. It's not so confusing. And we have also more space for the video cut. Alright, so now we have them linked and now I'm going to assign some colors. So it's going to be obvious which ones belong together. Oops, it's the same color. Oh, nice. All right, that looks good. So now we can start uh, with my list. So let's see. So the intro is the first one, which is this one. So all the rest is gonna go. I'm gonna see if it's correct. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's the first part. That's fine. Okay, so the new one, the next one, is where I'm playing the right symbol, is from the second one. That's on my list. So, let's see if that's correct. Alright, 
That's correct. So the next one is from the fourth. Next one is from the fourth. And it starts, I think, where the groove starts. Yep, a little bit earlier. If you see the picture leaking, uh, it's because, you know, it's really slowing down the screen recording, slowing down the computer. Looks good. That's fine. Now I see here the fill before the chorus. That's still the verse. Okay, so the fill is from the second take again. All right, that's fine. That looks good. Okay, the chorus is from the first one again. And this seems to be the whole chorus. Or what I call the chorus. I don't know if it's meant to be the chorus. You never know with these trap tracks. Okay, that looks good. Alright, that's fine. And the last fill we just saw was not in sync, so this is from... Well, let's see, take two. Alright, that's fine. So, the next one is... Oh yeah, it's all the same. So I'm gonna leave all of them here, so I know I can choose from everything. Okay, so I'm gonna continue and finish these, uh, these parts here. I'm gonna come back to you. Okay, so I'm back here and I finished all those cuts. Um, actually, it's pretty easy this time because everything fits pretty good. Sometimes you have parts that don't really fit into another. So like you played the crash symbol with the left hand and on the other take it's with the right hand and then you have a real problem and then you need to really cut it, you know, like frame by frame and check if the head is there and if the head is there. So we always try to, you know, make it really good so that people, you know, don't necessarily realize uh, that there are more than one take uh, playing, which I mean, it's fine. I I mean, it's it's OK. It's, it's, it's the same thing as if you go to the studio. So and that's that's how we do it, because we only have two cameras also. But um, 
but yeah anyways that's that's how we do it and actually it's pretty far already so the only thing that i need to do now is you know make some additional cuts you know here and there see um what looks nice so that it becomes fluent and nice to watch but the the heavy part is already done now comes the fun part right so i'm just gonna do it really quick you know um not like do it like extremely beautiful just you know i think people want to because in the past we did a lot of videos where we put a lot of time and a lot of effort into the video cut i think it's better to just you know do it basic but people that people can see what you actually play right so i'm going to do that right now and um Afterwards, we still have to do the, the color grading, of course, that it looks a little bit nicer. Everything that you see right now is straight from the camera. Um, maybe that's interesting for you guys as well, because we have our own uh, studio room here. And we sort of try to, you know, uh, have it look black or dark. So we have two lights. And, and in the back we have they, they appear to be blue for you guys but actually they're white those lamps um, it's because those professional film lights those have uh, warmer uh, tones and we use uh, for our white balance we use those uh, those colors and that makes those those other uh, lights in the back uh, appear blue which I like a lot so that's how white looks blue actually it's not blue um, so I'm just going to do the cut here and then I'll be back for you guys uh, with the grading. Okay. Okay, so I finished all the cuts. Actually, this project looks really funny, I think. Actually, it can look, you know, different all the time. You know, that's just the way I did it today um, because I wanted to be time efficient. Um, generally, we try to be more time efficient all the time. So I think this worked out pretty good with my list. Um, normally I never use this list where I have, um, you know, written in advance which, um, which takes uh, I used uh, in, the, in the master audio. But this time I did it and I really like it. It was really fast actually. Great. So now it looks like, uh, you know, like a video game a little bit. I like it a lot. And um, yeah. Very functional video cut, you know, just between, you know, those two angles all the time that are actually playing. Yeah, let's talk about the grading now. I think the grading is great. Um, our first videos, if you look at them, we never used any grading. And recently I discovered that it looks like really, really good <laughs> if you do additional grading. And also, um, then you don't really have to be that, you know picky when you when you film because what you see right now here um, is the front camera and you see at the right side you know there is the you know the carpet on the wall and there's a little bit of light on it and it looks pretty bad right now and before we always you know did it like perfect like no light had to be could be anywhere where it was visible right so and now um, since my new color grading uh, workflow it doesn't really matter so I always do the or I really recommend you guys to do the um, the grading in the end because otherwise your computer will not be very happy um, actually I could just you know delete all those tracks but just for you know having it and maybe being able to change something afterwards still it's nice to just keep them like this um, all right so let's get into the grading. So I always use a plugin that's called Magic Bullet Looks. It's a really great plugin. Um, so and I actually I did some I saved some presets in advance. So let's check uh, what it is. Okay, one is called Fat Cat Grading One. I'm just gonna drag it. On the track and see what it is. I don't know. Okay, I see blue color. I see a lot of blue color, which looks nice. Okay, let's see. Disable it. Okay, first one is change color. This is. Oh, we actually don't need it today because 
uh, the skin colors were pretty good. Sometimes we have to change the skin colors when it, you know, sometimes they turn really, really red and then uh, it looks really bad. But today is fine. So maybe in the end, uh, when the, the other grading is applied. So first of all is the three-way color corrector. And this is the this is the main grading. So there's a little bit of blue going on everywhere. I like this. And also saturation is up a lot. And a little bit of changes here. Yeah, it shouldn't be overdone. Right? You always have to do it subtle so it still looks good. So you don't have to make it that dark. It should be still pretty nice and crisp, the picture. Especially when you put the, 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 the black borders around it afterwards. He's actually sharpening, but we don't need it right now because we filmed it from, from a stand, this one. It's no problem, we don't need it. So we don't have any magic bullet looks here yet. Let's see uh, when I remember co correctly. There should be some magic bullet. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so the only thing that it does is the vignette. So you can, you know, put a black border around it. it looks really nice and dark. And Maybe a little too dark already. Yeah, that's fine. It's just so you don't see everything, the carpet around it and stuff. Yeah, better. And now put another vignette so it's a little bit more lightened up, but it's too much in this case already. Make it a little bit less dark again, otherwise it's going to be too dark, probably. Oh, it's not even necessary. You can leave it off. Yeah, it's not necessary. Oops. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah, looks nice. I like it. Now we can see the problem with the skin color. Oh yeah, that's great because then you guys can see the skin color problem. Okay, I'm gonna just use this one we always have. It's called change color. And you can see the face is turning from red to normal, which is great. Maybe a little bit less. So it doesn't look fake, shouldn't look fake, should look nice. Yeah, better. Great. All right. So this is our grading for the back camera. And I'm also going to save a preset now. And call it... Revolution back cam right it's great because now I can always if I need a need the grading for the back cam I can just use that one great um, okay front I'm just gonna start out with the front with my grading I just did revolution back cam and let's see how it looks a uh, little bit too dark, a little bit too blue. Okay, let's see. So it's too blue for my taste. A little bit more normal. Yeah, and the saturation is a little bit high. Yeah, this looks cool. Not so saturated. It's 
fine if you mix it, you know, it's, it doesn't need to be the same in, in, on, on all the angles. Okay, magic bullet looks. Too dark, way too dark. Oh, he still has that one. A little bit buggy. Little. No. Got it. Okay. So, this is a little bit strong. We don't need it that strong. Yeah. It's better maybe a little bit here. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe we can use a little bit of light again. Shouldn't be too dark. Yeah, that's cool. All right, let's see. Okay, skin color doesn't do a whole lot here. It's minor. Actually, the, the color of the drums do change a little bit, which sucks, but what can you do? I think it's more important that it doesn't look like bad. Okay, that's cool. So I am. Yeah, I am going to save that preset as well. That's the nice thing when you work with fixed camera angles. You can like use those presets like and you're done. Okay, so revolution front one can. Cool. Great. So, this one is done, this one is done, this one gets the revolution front one cam, done. Okay, so that's the way I do it. So I'm gonna finish this arrangement and then I'll see you guys for the last steps of this video cut. Later! Okay guys, so I actually did change the back preset a little bit because it was a little bit too dark, but not much. So what I'm gonna do right now, because my computer for some reason is really slow today, not only with the screen recording, but just in general. Um, sometimes it's cool, what you can do is you can pre-bounce everything because I still need to put the the intro and the end card into it um, but just um, also I need to still put this video I'm recording right now uh, behind it so I'm gonna do pre-bounce and in general when you bounce or render actually <laughs> yeah the the audio word is bounce of course uh, here it's called rendering rendering um, so I'm just type I and then it gets the region where it should be exported or rendered and out. Alright. So in general I always render um, in the normal, you know, in the sort of native natural way. So this setting here means uh, that it's the that it's rendered in the same with the same settings that the original um, video was in Render. all right now I'll call it revolution pre render okay that's it I'm, I'm not touching any other setting because anything else will just slow the process down a lot. So I'm just going to export it and uh, I'll see you in a little second. By the way, uh, you can also put it in an query so that you can 
keep working and it does it in the back, the rendering. But apparently it doesn't work <laughs> since many versions of uh, uh, Adobe here are video cut and yeah, just gonna do the, the slow way and wait it out. So uh, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so the rendering is done, took a while actually. And now I was thinking it could be pretty interesting for you guys to quickly see how I process the, the audio that um, that I just recorded for this screencast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Pro Tools here. And actually this version here is Pro Tools 12. And I just recently got it. Um, you know, it's a little bit difficult because some of my plugins don't work. But for now, it's pretty good because it can bounce offline. That means, um, yeah, it's pretty 2008, but until recently, until version 11, Pro Tools couldn't actually bounce offline. That means you had to actually like bounce or record a track uh, like in real time, which sucks. So while it was um, while it was rendering, I did this little arrangement here. I, d I always do like a session data import, so I have my my uh, my main bus here and my recording output. So what you see here is the audio from the from the screen cars cast recordings that I just did that you just watched, and you can hear. It doesn't sound really good. It's correct, it's like project. Yeah, pretty bad. Uh, what I did is I split up um, the actual talking and the clips where I was playing back music or the video. I, sp I just cut out those parts because I don't want to compress those where I, I'm playing back. But I really need to compress and enhance the the vocals or the, the the speaking voice that you're hearing right now. So let's see. I don't have many plugins here, but I'm actually testing the isotope ones that look really, really good. So this is my limiter for for the output. Yeah, this is still in demo mode. Um, let's see. Let's see what I can get out of here. I think they're pretty good presets already. Let's see. Wow, this is actually getting a plugin review too. So let's see, vocals. Let's hear a little snippet. Welcome, you just saw my welcome, you just saw my welcome, you just saw my welcome, you just saw okay. my This is pretty annoying, right? Um let's hear it. The presets. Basic compression and EQ. Welcome, you just saw my new video revolution, uh, my new drum cover. And I was thinking it could be interesting for some people if you had like a little Welcome, you just saw my new video revolution, uh, my new drum cover. And I was thinking it could be interesting for some people if you had like a little welcome. You just saw my new video revolution, uh, my new drum cover. And I was thinking it could be interesting for some people if you had like a little welcome. You just saw my new video revolution, uh, my new drum cover. And I was thinking it could be interesting for some people <laughs> yeah, if you weird. had like a little welcome. You just saw my new video revolution, uh, my new drum I think this is a good starting point. So let's see. Overview, yeah. Let's see, maybe I can get a little bit more. Welcome, you just saw my new video revolution. Volume. And my new drum cover. And I was thinking it could be interesting for some people if you had like a little. Welcome, you just saw my new video revolution. Yeah, now it's a little bit more compressed. Actually, it sounds pretty good. It's not, you know, very special, but it shouldn't be. It's a screencast. 
So let's see what the output does. Welcome, you just saw my new video, Revolution, uh, my new drum cover. Oh, it's really soft. So I'm gonna put down the threshold to make it louder. Welcome, you just saw my new video, Revolution, uh, my new drum cover. And I was thinking it could be interesting for some people if you had like a little... Welcome, you just saw my new video, Revolution, uh, my new drum cover. Yeah, sounds pretty good. We still have plenty of headroom. Welcome, you just saw my new video, Revolution, uh, my new drum cover. 2 dBs. That's fine. That's it, I think. It's nothing special. Oh yeah, this is obviously the bad sound. Obviously, um, the sound quality is really bad from the camera. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. Let's hear this clip. And uh, mixed in Pro Tools, as I said. So, yeah, it's pretty basic. Um, but that's what it is, I think. So pretty cool. I actually, I did record it in separate videos, the screencast. So that's one, two, three, four videos. And the one I'm doing right now that you're watching right now, um, I'm gonna stop now and put it behind here. And then I will offline bounce this whole arrangement and, you know, do the pre-bounce, use the pre-bounce that I just did. Um, from the video in a new arrangement and then also put the the screencasts in it and then that's that's gonna be the video that you are seeing right now So guys, thank you so much. I hope like someone found this helpful um, If you have any questions, let me know. I'll answer them. I promise and Yeah, I really hope you guys, you know, enjoy our videos and because there's way more stuff coming up so, um, really funny, I feel like a radio radio uh, guy right now. Um, okay, so just let us know what you want to hear, which songs we should play, which tutorials. Uh, I mean, I didn't talk about drumming at all. Um, I obviously could do like a million videos about drumming as well, um, which I certainly will do in the future. So just let me know what you guys want to hear. And yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, this is Felix. And uh, I'll see you very soon. Bye. Uh -huh.